Hi. Hi. How are you? Is this my seat here in the middle? It is. You're in the hot seat. Come on in. So here's our guest, next guest, and Bonnie. Hey. And nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Alex. Good to be here. So nice to see you. Thank you too. Thank you. And was our keynote speaker at the conference this morning, right? Yes. Yes. And everybody showed up for an 8 a.m. keynote. They laughed at my jokes, and I think they got something out of it. So it's good. Uh, now I was I was watching your session from my room this morning, and so I wanted to start. Uh, that sounded very diva-ish. <laughs> I had my room service. First, I wanted to start with an apology for saying that. Uh, but I was not expecting you came out with a guitar and you sang a song of resilience. Yeah. And I've never seen a song about resilience. So how did like how did that happen? That you would say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to DRJ at eight in the morning. And what they want to hear is, and it was great, by the way, a song about, so that was amazing. Yeah, so I was running one day and a song came on by Ollie Moore's called Mirrors, called Dance Me in the Night. And I was like, oh my God, I love this song. It's super easy to play on the guitar, which is good because I just learned the guitar recently. <laughs> and um, I can rewrite those lyrics to fit what I'm talking about, to fit the audience. And uh, it's worked out really well for a lot of a lot of groups. And it's a great way to connect with people, you know, with music. Very much so. So what, what was the, the talk about this morning? We talked about resilience and people in disaster recovery work in resilience all the time, but it's more of business resilience and cybersecurity and, you know, continuity and all that stuff. I was talking about personal resilience and mm. more specifically mental toughness, which is resilience plus confidence. And how do we build that so that we don't want to rip our hair out every day when we go to work? That's why I don't have much hair left because I work, <laughs> I work in this profession. That means you have lots of confidence then. And maybe not the mental toughness. <laughs> so uh, for someone who has that, I like how you said that it's plus the mental toughness. If, if someone is like, oh, that I need more of that. What are what are some of the things you shared with the, with the from this morning? Um, well, so first of all, taking a minute to say, what is my problem with this? You know, often we squash our emotional reactions to things when they frustrate us, when they upset us, when we're scared about it not going well. And if we can just take a minute to acknowledge that reaction, it allows us to shift the activity in our brain around to the part that actually thinks rather than being back in the, the lizard brain part that reacts. And we are able to then think cl more clearly about how do I want to deal with this situation to get the results I want, rather than just how am I going to react to this to get out of it as quickly as possible. And that requires being uncomfortable. Um, but we so often get better results from whatever we're dealing with when we can do that. Is that why a lot of people struggle with that? Is because you said it's uncomfortable and people are going to take the easy road. Well, and, and our brain is wired to take the easy road because back when our brain was invented, we needed to save as much energy for survival as possible. And so our brains are wired to be lazy and to not take the difficult <laughs> route, right? We want it to be, we, want, we love our habits. We like the way we've always done things because it's more comfortable. And so that is, I mean, we're fighting biology here. But, you know, back in the day when our brains were invented, there was no DoorDash, there was no Amazon. If you didn't have, you know, your tribe and you weren't acting, you weren't surviving and uh so we have to kind of work with this old hardware in a in a more modern world and so understanding that resistance and where it comes from is, is helpful sometimes so what do you do personally when you find out oh hey i'm i'm kind of in this rut with my habits like how how do you personally as Anne, first have the awareness to notice that and then what do you do to, to shake that up yeah so one of the things i love to do is ask my brain how else could i get there so have like a creative brainstorming session and start jotting down just all of the ideas that pop in my head. And some are crazy, like go to the moon, you know, or, you know, go work at Starbucks. Like, but by listing all the crazy ideas, not only do I then have a lot of options, I have a lot of fun doing that. So I usually laugh a little bit, but I start to identify that I have choice. And when I feel like I have choice and there's something I can do about this situation, I feel a whole lot more confident because I feel like, okay, I can do something here that matters rather than just 
riding around on a wrecking ball, running into things, having no control over where the darn things go, you know? And when we have that, that builds that confidence, that builds the mental toughness, it builds that self-efficacy that we can do something about a situation. But how do you bring those two together? Because I, I know people who are very confident in themselves, but they're completely lost. You know, they would find themselves lost on a one-way street. You know, like <laughs> you mean geographically or just in life? <laughs> it could be both. Oh yeah. You know, both. But but they're very confident. You know, they 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 have nothing nothing uh, phases them type thing. But yet they're still completely scatterbrained. So how do you? How do you bring those two together? Well, and I think the key here is there are, we have confidences in different things, right? And so for your, this person that you're referring to or people or category or whatever, they have confidence in certain areas. They have confidence maybe in their ability to figure things out. Like, ah, oh, I get it, it's fine. Or they're just like, yeah, whatever's gonna happen, it's gonna happen and we'll figure it out when we get there. Um, but still not tying those things together. So I think the key is, so often when we are confident in certain areas, sometimes that makes us rush to a decision. We like certainty, our brain likes certainty. And so oftentimes we rush to a solution that may not be the right solution. We end up being a hot mess, wandering around the discomfort zone, like what's going on? So I think one of the ways that we can mitigate that is to just pause for a second and do what I just was talking about. Well, how else could I solve this? What are some of my options? Rather than just rushing to what I've always done, saying, okay, how else could I get there? To start saying, okay, maybe that doesn't get me the results I want, but this could. And so taking just a little bit more time to actually think rather than going on habit could really help those people tie those two things together. I would like to form a resilience cover band with the name Wandering Around My Comfort Zone. <laughs> Wandering Around the Discomfort Zone. You play, you play guitar. Yeah. I've got piano. I, I've got guitar, bass, and uh, some synth. Right, so well, maybe, maybe Bob Arnold will put us up on stage as a trio. And I've, I've kind of got animal's hair, so I can take drugs. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's fantastic. What about support systems? You know, that is one of the huge things that we talked about, is the importance of other people in all of this. You know, I talk about when our brains were invented, we're working with old hardware. And in the time that the brain was invented, if we were alone, we were not going to survive, period. And our brain hasn't gotten an upgrade on that. So the even though we can be introverts and never want to leave the house, we still need that backup. And so bringing in your team, bringing in your tribe, whether it's personally or professionally, when you know you can rely on people, you're going to feel a heck of a lot more confident and resilient and just satisfied because it's a whole lot more fun if we're not doing it alone. Now, you mentioned introvert. Uh, I'm an introvert, okay. which, which I am. He's I know it, it's very weird because I, I can turn on and off very quickly mm -hmm. depending on where I am. You know. But how does that work for some people who just don't know? You know, they can't figure out where where they fit in, where they are, and yet you know, trying to get that resilience mindset. Like, is it easier for an introvert? Is it easier for an extrovert? Is does it depend on their support system that impact either one, or, or yeah. does it even come into play? It depends on about four thousand eight hundred ninety-two million factors. <laughs> That's small. Huh? Yeah, no, and it's, and, and it's it's true, and I think. This the, the key message that we need to understand is that we gotta find our own way that works for us. What works for me is not gonna work for you, it's not gonna work for James. It's we need to find the right path for ourselves, which is one of the hardest things about being a human being. Because we want somebody to tell us how to do it, because again, our brains are lazy and it's a whole lot easier that way. But if we can find the right formula for ourselves and trust in what we know works for ourselves and not what works for everybody else, we're going to be a whole lot more fulfilled. And, and whether we're an introvert or an extrovert, whether, we, you know, whatever the situation is, we're going to be able to fit it into our lives in a fulfilling way because we figured ourselves out. And, and again, that's hard because you are your unique little snowflake. And, you know, it's it's hard to be floating around the discomfort zone in, you know, by yourself, kind of finding your own way. 
But the cool thing is once it clicks into place and you find that thing that works, you know, like you could be here doing podcasts in the middle of the trade show floor all day. And then you're like, no, I'm not going to dinner. I'm going back to my room and I'm going to do whatever I want to do because See, I need to recharge. That's, that's, right? that's, that's me. That's exactly what he does. And that's what I have to do too. Because, you know, people invite me to dinner and I'm like, you know what? No, my job is all about energy management. I got to be able to show up tomorrow to whatever I need to show up to. And if I go out and I'm out late and I'm eating too much food and all the things are laughing too loud and using my voice, I can't do what I need to do tomorrow. Yeah. So it's really drawing those boundaries and finding how, what works for you and anybody can be successful in that way. I love that term, energy management, uh, and I'm going to use that tonight to get out of dinner. So, <laughs> You're welcome. Just blame Anne. I'm like, well, Anne told me. Anne told me. I, I have don't to have be to better go. with my energy management, so I have to decline your And if you don't like it, you can find it. Blame Anne. Blame Anne. <laughs> Anne. Yeah, no, I, I've got it. I, I'm the Canadian one. Uh, oh, are you? Yeah, Excellent. So. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm breaking the song. No, I'm sorry. I should have had you bring the guitar. No. You were talking, and I had a question that came into my head, and I was thinking about all the time until you mentioned about the energy management. <laughs> and now it's going to bug me what it was. Um, You'll think of it at like two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's probably when it would come to come to my head. Uh, well, let let's say um, the, the fear. I think mm. it's about fear. Mm. How do you go about addressing fear? Because I know you mentioned uh, you know, the different ways to find what works for you. But fear plays a part in this. Mm -hmm. So how That's do you come it. over the fear? Because mm -hmm. we can have fears about everything, and that affects and our confidence, yeah. and it affects you know our resilience and everything. You know? So how do you overcome that that step? Because that I find that to be a piece all on its own. No, and it is if you boil all of our resistance to change and our struggles and our you know expectations that we've met, it all comes down to fear. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear, I mean, fear of get fired, fear of all the things. Um, and, and the key is to see that fear as a, a speed bump rather than a stop sign. You know, it's recognizing that that fear is normal. That fear is your brain trying to keep you alive. Super handy. It's not always helpful. And so that's where what I was talking about this morning about the sassy back talk comes in. Where I, the, it's the, the fear is coming from that limbic system in our brain trying to keep us alive. And so I like to bring in that prefrontal cortex and say, okay. And I, again, my amygdala is named Sally because I have so many conversations with this voice of fear and this voice of doubt that we, we've become on a first basis. So I say, you know, Sally, thank you for trying to keep me alive. I get what you're trying to do. And I start reminding myself of the things that I've succeeded at of the things I figured out, of the things that could go well, and try to convince Sally, <laughs> to the degree that that is possible, that it's going to be okay. But it's not letting that fear stop you, and not waiting for it to go away, because it's not going to be comfortable. It's not people that say, do it fearless. I'm like, oh, good luck with that. Let me know how you do that. Yeah. I haven't figured out how. You know, and one of the questions we got was, how do you get Sally to shut up? I don't know. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know because that voice of doubt just keeps going. And that's where that fear comes in. So that is at the base of all of our resistance. It reminds me of um, my, my Buddhist teachings. It's uh, you, know, you are not your thoughts. Mm, yes. You know, you, and that's, you know, your thoughts are all that negativity. That That's the Sally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the Sally. Yeah. And you are not that entity that person that thing well and that's why i named her because i needed to remind myself of that that those are thoughts that are for a certain purpose but not the purpose of living in this external world those thoughts are purely to keep you safe from anything <laughs> any kind of danger or different or anything like that right. which these days keeps us sitting on the couch not doing anything yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, to bring that kind of energy that you brought this morning, Eva Morning, that, that is so impressive. So thank you for that. If people want to learn more about you or their own Sally, what's the way that they can can learn more about you or get in touch with you? Yeah, sure. Yourchangespeaker.com is my website. 
and bonnie.com also goes, but if you don't know how to spell that, yourchangespeaker.com. My podcast is called Dancing in the Discomfort Zone Podcast. Right? So that's been going on for about eight years now. And uh, weekly interviews with people who have dealt with discomfort of any kind. And um, and then every once in a while I throw in my own stuff for fun. So there's 200 and some 70 something episodes for people to go back and nice. get a little inspiration. Nice. I actually I did think of a question that popped out of my head. Lessons learned. How do we incorporate that into things? Learning learning from others. You know, uh, let's say I make a mistake. You know. How do you incorporate that instead of laughing at me? Look at the stupidity Alex did. You know, <laughs> and then you get I, to laugh at me how later. Do I, <laughs> how do I incorporate that into yeah. me to make strengthen my uh, muscle memory or my my energy management or my, my you know, just awareness? Yeah. Well, humans are notoriously bad at learning from other people's mistakes because <laughs> we're so busy laughing and having a good time because it wasn't us this time. Um, but I, I love the debrief. You know, when I walk away from a situation and I'm not happy with how it went, I wish I had done something differently or, you know, I do the debrief, which is five questions. First of all, what happened? What are the facts? Because so often my emotions will throw the bad stuff way out of proportion. So what happened? Okay, cool. What went badly? What do I wish had gone differently? And what went well? Because again, I'd like to be reminded that something was not a complete disaster in that situation. And then what am I going to do the same next time so that I get the good stuff happening again? And what am I going to do differently next time? And the key with those questions is they make you actually think about it, which is the only way you're actually going to make a substantive change in the future based on the habits that you have. You know, if you're in that moment again in the future, this stopping for even five minutes just to debrief on this situation can help you when you're in that moment again to say, oh, I've been through this before. Remember, mm -hmm. you had a plan. And and you're more likely to remember that thing. But you have to take the minute after the stuff that didn't go well to look at it, which we yeah. don't like to do. We want to move fast it, past it as fast as we possibly can. So taking a minute and asking those five questions can really help. Yeah. And if nothing changes, nothing is learned. That's right. And if you don't learn anything from it, you're going to make the same mistakes over and over again. And then we do get to laugh at you because that's your fault. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like when I set up this equipment, right, James? So my fault. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us. Really thanks for having it. me. Yeah. And thanks for being here at DRJ and Absolutely. sharing your uh, enthusiasm and the energy with everybody. All right. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Enjoy. Are you here for the rest of the conference? Are you uh, no, here? I got to go on to the next thing. So, oh, uh, well, yeah, so safe travels. You're to my you. last stop. Thank you very much. Great. Off to Nashville. One, oh, enjoy. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thank care. you, guys. Thank you.